Today I've got something very special for you, but uh, first, darn, have you seen my baby Yoda? No? Neither have I. It's on order. It should be here sometime in April. But all kidding aside, how cool is this? This is a uh, kit that was generously donated by 3dcauldron.com and uh, this one I uh, put together it probably took me about all in all about three hours of, of work to get it to look the way I have it here which is not to say perfect because this was pretty much my practice one they basically I, I wrote them an email and said, hey, you know what? I saw you've got these cool little uh, tracker fobs and I just so happen to be friends with one of the guys who played a bounty hunter on The Mandalorian, Mr. Dominic Pace. And I said, so, uh, you know, what would be really cool? He's going to be at Stockton Con on January 19th, which is for me coming up this weekend. And I said, you know, what would be really cool is if I could present him one, he could sign it, and then we could, you know, use it to auction it off for charity and maybe raise some money for a local hospital that I happen to work with. And uh, the guy wrote me back and said, sure, that sounds great. And uh, so he sent me not one, but he sent me two, thankfully. Now this one here, I'll give you a closer look in a couple of minutes. But this one right here, um, I really kind of went overboard on the uh, on the weathering, but I still think it turned out pretty nice. Now I've got another one that I'm going to show you, and I'm going to show you all the components. I'm going to give an honest review of it. Um, you know, I I'm not beholden to anybody. If they have a product and I test it out. I'm going to say what I like about it. I'm going to say, you know, here's what I think could be improved. But overall, for cosplay, for the price that they're asking for this, uh, yeah, you can't beat it because it comes with the blinky light. It comes with all of the accessories that you see right here. And it's like 17 bucks. It comes pre-printed. And uh, in the colors that the uh, the tracking fobs are. So, I mean, if you really were kind of a novice and you just wanted to slap one together, uh, you could you could basically put it together right out of the box with, with, with a little bit of an exception for dealing with the wiring. So, anyway, that's what we're going to be talking about today. I'm going to show you how I did it. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be a good time. So... Come on along. All right, so this is the 3D Cauldron uh, 3D printed tracking fob. Now, there are some other fobs out there on the market. I've seen uh, some very limited supply. Uh, this one, to me, looks like it has the closest to the screen used appearance. Um, one thing that I will say that um, some people might think, well, you know, 
it doesn't beep and yes this one does not beep there are some out there that do uh, they utilize Arduinos um, but if you think about it for what you're gonna probably use one of these for for cosplay um, you know you might stick one under you know into your belt or you know if you're making a fan film you can always add the sound in later uh, the other thing is the price point this comes as an unassembled kit for $17.95 I think plus shipping um, but it's really easy to put together once you get past a couple hurdles um, the first thing that I mentioned that uh, I did was I decided to weather mine. Now the way you activate it is it has a little switch on the bottom that activates a light that uh, blinks. It's a blinky light that comes with it. Okay, that it comes with the kit, comes with the batteries. So, you know, right off the bat, you're good to go as far as that goes. I know because I did a lot of research because I was thinking about making one of these myself. Um, and I was, I went many trips to the dollar store looking on Amazon for blinky lights, uh, LEDs, things like that. And uh, that's how I came across this. But uh, as far as the appearance of it, once it's assembled, it's pretty much dead on. Now, one of the things I do have to mention, although uh, it comes uh, complete, ready to assemble, minus a little bit of uh, uh, support material removal, and some stripping of the wiring. Uh, the the unit itself actually does have the print lines on it. Now, it does come printed though in black and in silver. And what uh, 3D Colorin recommends is using XTC3D resin. It's pretty much their go-to way to do it. You don't have to paint it, you don't have to sand it, you just apply a, a light coat of the XTC3D resin, which you can get at Walmart or on Amazon, and it will give it that smooth look, and it's already it'll have an already finished look. I <laughs> didn't want to go that route. I wanted mine to look a little bit more worn. Um, so I did use sanding, and I did use a couple different techniques with this. On mine, what I did was I, uh, I painted all of the pieces except for the light. Um, then I clear coated them, then I sanded them, then I painted them again. And I got this really nice kind of uh, almost rusty looking metal look. And I wanted it to look like, you know, maybe it's been dropped in the mud or it's been out in the elements, you know, because bounty hunting is a complicated profession and not an easy one. Now, the, uh, the pieces that come with this are the box that uh, the components go into. It has a hole in the bottom where you put the light. Two side pieces, already printed in silver. It comes with a piece of wire. Now, <laughs> and this is a conversation I've had with uh, the guys at 3D Cauldron. This is probably the hardest thing you will do. Uh, and that is stripping this wire with the one they provided. Now, um, I've talked to him. He says that they're probably looking at maybe in the future they'll just strip the wire ahead of time this is a just a basic copper wire and it's uh pretty much what they used looks like on the, on the show but it comes uh not even just in like a rubber coating it comes in a hard plastic coating that was just a complete pain in the butt to uh remove you know that being said you know like i said i'm going to give you an honest review i spoke to him about it because um, my friend Dominic was so jazzed about seeing this 
that you know he wanted to look into the possibility of getting some for his booth when he goes to appearances so that he can you know have them and sign them for people because his character gecko actually used one of these so um you know when i was talking to the people at 3d cauldron they said you know what uh, maybe in the future we'll go ahead and um just take the 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 covering off the wire for you uh and the other the other thing that's kind of difficult with the wire it, is that it doesn't come out braided it doesn't come out in this nice little ropey thing that boy that's a technical term isn't it? it doesn't come out in this kind of a rope type of a a um setting the way it is here okay it comes out in strands and um you know, uh, the, the, the copper between getting poked, trying to strip it out of the covering and getting poked while I was winding it up, you know, that was kind of a, not my favorite part, but, um, they do say that, you know, you can take a vise and I didn't even think about this. You put one end in a vise, put the other end in a, um, in the chuck hole of a, of a power drill, tighten it down go slowly it'll wind it for you and I'm like that makes sense so actually that's a good tip wish I'd have thought of that when I started um, other components that come with the kit include all of the furniture that goes on the outside you've got this little plate here that goes on the front you've got the little bezel that the light um, sits in now one thing i really screwed up on on this one was this light is actually has a flat side and it has a rounded side and the rounded side is actually designed i think to help maximize the amount of light just that that is shown and it goes in very nicely like this it's there's a recessed area on the unit and there you go i didn't realize that and I put it upside down and um, I thought it went like that no I don't believe it actually does go like that um, but you know you really can't tell most people are not gonna be able to tell so if you mess it up well whatever um, it comes as I said with the light bulb it comes with a little uh, thing to protect the battery until you're ready to use it and it comes with this plug on the end here that goes in there once you jam the light in there and you use it with a coin or a bot or you know a bottle opener or something like that to turn the bottom of it and it turns the light on and off um, that brings us to another thing you're going to need at the very least uh, a corkscrew if not some needle nose pliers you know those pliers probably work better but sometimes when you go in with the pliers and you have to remove because this thing comes it's jam-packed full of uh, support material so you got to really get in there and 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 work that stuff out and sometimes uh, like on this one it was fine I, I pretty much got it out in one yank this one here broke off about halfway through and I was like oh crap what am I gonna do now I took a corkscrew you know carefully you don't want to break this you don't want to put too much tension on the block here but I took a corkscrew and I gently worked it in there and worked it in there down to, to where this hole is and then I just yanked the stuff out um, there are two holes on the front that also have some support material in them um, I have a little Leatherman here that has a, a small little tool that's like a almost like a needle or a leather punch and uh, I used that right here you can see it I use that to get in there and just kind of clean it out and yank out the support material um, so you know it does take a little doing but it's not it's not overly complicated there's also support material in this part here 
which on this one I haven't actually taken out yet. Um, let's see if I can get it with this. See, just popped it and it came right out. And so now I have, you can see it's got the little, uh, well, I don't know how well you can see it. It's got this little groove in it that now I can use, you know, anything really to move it with and turn the light on and off. And, uh, because I want to save the battery on mine, I'm going to go ahead and turn this one off right now. And that's how it does it. You just click this way, click this way. It can be a little finicky. Um, so just be prepared for that. Uh, sometimes, you know, you want to keep an eye on it, make sure it's not coming on. <laughs> you know, it's, once it's in there, it's kind of, it's kind of not... It's not like it has a loose wire on it, but the way this light works is it's a twist on, twist off type of thing. So, now the light itself, it's a uh, pretty nice little LED. You turn it, and it goes on. You turn it this way, it goes off. And on the back side of it, it has a little, um, I think this was for probably a key ring or something like that, but the... Uh, the switch, if you want to call it that, has a little hole in the bottom that fits right on there. So before you put it in the, um, what do you call it, before you stick it inside the unit, you're probably going to want to go ahead and stick that on there. You To put it together, take this part. Now you gotta really kind of work it in there and you wanna be careful, okay? But you're gonna get it to about right there and you're gonna go, well crap, okay, now what do I do? I used a rubber mallet. And almost there. There, see, it's just about flush. Now, you can turn around and use this. Uh, which one should I use? Give me a sec. And there you go. Now I use <laughs> fingernail file. Okay, so there it's on, there it's off. It's actually probably better than the one I got there. Now, um, as I said, you can finish it just the way it is with uh, a little bit of the XTC 3D, or I once again like to ascribe to the Star Wars used universe ethos. So what I did was I took the regular that's what it looks like on the inside. You know, it's that color naturally. Now, what I did was I took a, actually a glossy, almost chrome type of a paint and painted the sides. And then what I did was I went in and I took uh, sandpaper and I scoured it. So then what you end up with is something that almost looks like it's it's been used, it's out there, and it it has a real metallic look to it. So basically, I just, like I said, just take any type of a, a silver gloss type of a paint, apply it to it, and then scour the crap out of it with some sandpaper. Like, not, not super heavy grit. Um, I did the same thing with the other pieces. You know, I kind of make it look, wanted to make it look like it was maybe made out of aluminum or tin and it's been banged up. Okay. So now... Before I go any further, I've got to be able to put the uh, wire through this little connector thing here. 
which uh, in real life, I think what they used was just a standard, you know, wire coupling that you bind two wires together with. Let's see, I gotta really tighten this down. Okay. So then, now the, the the tricky thing is, is like some of these strands will start to come up. You know, you might have to yank them off later. Uh, but, you know, what do you want for 17 bucks? You know, it's, uh, it's still pretty darn good. Uh, and uh, it looks pretty accurate. <laughs> but you will get, a, you. Th that's one of the things with this. You're going to have some of this uh, stuff coming up. Just accept it now. You can use your uh, tool to kind of yank them off. You know, it's it's not the end of the world. There's plenty of strands there. You know, but what you want to do is you've got to get it to the point where you want both sides to be even. You know, see that one right there is really. It's see you now it's kind of coming up there. I need to go back that out and work on it some more. You know, once again, it's, it's, it's getting it into kind of a tight, not a weave, but, you know, you don't want it coming undone. And it will stick your fingers, that's for sure. You could, I could be wearing some kind of a protective glove, but, you know, then you lose your dexterity, and, it, you know, you'll feel it when it starts to get right. When it gets to kind of what you're going for. Why you no do what I say? Ow. Like I said, you want both ends to be kind of even. Stop being stupid. Tastes a little doing. It's really wanting to be a pain there. But like I said, you know, it's uh, it's not always gonna be super easy. But you just work with it until you get the thing off. clean that up in a little bit so anyway 
I'll finish that later. But then what I'm going to do is this piece goes on this side. This piece goes on this side. Like that. And what I do is I just use a tiny bit. You don't want to overdo it on the glue. This part is kind of tricky because <laughs> you want to make sure you really line it up with the holes. There's a little groove in the bottom of it that helps. Remember, the less careful you are, the more splatter you're going to get and the less happy you're going to be about it. Also, I do have gloves here, which I probably should be using so that I don't uh, glue my finger to myself. A tiny little spot there that needs a little... Ah, dang it. See, you now there I go and I get it on my finger like a dummy. There. And at this point, I am going to put on my gloves because one of the things that I messed up with the, the light was I got the stuff on my fingers and it started getting gummy and it ended up making it look really nasty. So, why are you being stupid? Stop that. Get on there. time on the last one.
don't stick to my finger, stupid. Okay, let's try this again. Careful to place this thing just right. And while that dries, I'll try and fix this a little better. Get rid of these little long pieces. Let's not go ahead and cut ourselves. That would be stupid, wouldn't it? That's pretty good. And you really want to make the, the ends that go into the unit as fine as you can make them. As sharp as you can make them. I'm not saying you get just one shot at it, but you want to get it right. Take the glue, put it there, put a little bit some more glue, put it there, then quickly go stick that end in there, this end in here. Give it a minute. Looks like I might have got a little tiny bit of glue on the, the front of it, which, you know, I mean, if that's the worst that I do, I'm okay with that. Bend it a little bit. Tweak it if you have to. And... There you go. One. Pretty screen accurate. Uh, tracking fob. Now this particular one is going to be going to Dominic Pace. And uh, he's going to sign it. And it's going to go, uh, hopefully, to a good home and raise some money for charity. There you go. Just like that. So, bottom line review. Um, I think that for the money and for the ease of putting something together, this is a pretty darn good deal. I'm not getting paid by 3D Cauldron to say that. Um, I'll be perfectly honest, the, the wire part is a pain in the butt. I hope they're going to change that. I think they're going to, based on my conversations with them. But uh, you really owe it to yourself if you're looking to do a bounty hunter or you're looking to do um, the Mandalorian, you know, having a couple tracking fobs with you. To be able to lay down and say, okay, I got this guy, I got that guy. It's part of your cosplay. Or, you know, you're you're at the convention, you're walking around, you go, oh, this says that you, you got to come with me. You know, that can be a lot of fun. And uh, so I, I hope that uh, in the future, uh, I've talked to the guys at 3dcauldron.com. Uh, there's a good chance that they're going to, possibly have some more things for me to uh, try to put together and review. Uh, as always, I want to be perfectly honest about 
you know the quality and and things like that i'm not gonna i'm not gonna be dishonest um you know and i'll be f up front you know they may become a sponsor at some point uh but even even that being said i'm still going to go ahead and be honest with them and be honest with you but for right now i gotta tell you i'm impressed <laughs>